What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. Today we're focusing on what the Boston Bruins should do with the twenty, the fourteenth overall pick in the uh, twenty sixteen NHL entry draft. If you saw my mock draft up on uh, PowerPlayInsiders.com, my most recent one, I haven't taken Dante Fabro. Went a little bit off the. I, I did a piece today. You should check it out. Um, going through each of their seven draft, their picks and draft, and who I think they should take with each pick. Um, I, in my revised version, I get to take Charlie McAvoy at. Uh, you know, from Boston University, Favreau is committed to BU next year, so they could very likely be defense partners. So if you want to read more about that, click in the link in the description. But, um, you know, I like McAvoy a lot. I, I give McAvoy a slight edge over Favreau because he played, you know, at a high level in college hockey as one of the younger players, you know, in the NCAA this season. So, you know, I give him that edge, and he, he's, again, a phenomenal, phenomenal talent and a guy that... You know, I think could use another year or two of college hockey and then be ready to make the jump to the pro ranks. Favreau is a little more raw, and this isn't to discredit the BC League, <clears throat> not at all, but I think uh, he needs a little more room to grow. And I think what we've seen from McAvoy <clears throat> is he can play and excel against guys that are older, bigger, faster, and stronger. So, you know, I, I like McAvoy with uh, with that 14th overall pick, and I think he will be a phenomenal, phenomenal fit with the Bruins and Bruins fans. Will get ample opportunity to watch him now. If one of the big three, uh, Chikrin, Sir, Trevor, you Levy, somehow, some way, slides to 14, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely take them over. You know, the two aforementioned current slash future BU Terriers. Uh, but I don't think it, any of those three will still be on the board by the time the Bruins are picking, which is just the reality of the situation. But uh, you know, again, I think they're going to be they're in a, a decent spot with this 14th pick. Not having a, a third or fourth round pick kind of screws them. But, you know, we'll see how that, that shakes itself up, um, you know, with regards to adding depth to the organization. I think last year they they kind of whiffed in the first round, and I know it's still early, but the fact that tra they realistically could have had Travis Konechny, Kyle Connor, and uh, and Matt Barzal, and got none of the three, all due respect to Zaboro, Seneshin, and DeBrusque, uh, kind of leaves a little bit to be desired. So, you know, they got to hit on this pick. And uh, in addition to their their second first round pick, which I'll talk more about once that pick gets set in stone, if you will, with the uh, with the Stanley Cup final and, and the San Jose Sharks and all that shit. So we'll see how it works itself up, but definitely a situation to keep an eye on. And uh, you know, if you want to read more about the Bruins seven draft picks and who I think they'll take with each one of those picks, check out PowerPlayInsiders.com in the description below. Me. That's all I got. Sort of the power play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes throughout the playoffs and beyond. Later, guys.